So, today I'm going to be talking about Sea Venom. Sea Venom is a naval missile used or going to be used going into service, really uh, entering service now with the UK and France in the Royal Navy and the French Navy. It's a pretty incredible missile. It's versatile and actually it's a pretty natural follow-on from what we've had in the past, but nonetheless it has some pretty great capabilities. It's a potent missile and it will continue to be potent because it is so versatile. Uh, it's useful in a lot of categories and that means that likely it's not going to go out of service for a while. In any case, simply, Sea Venom is a naval missile, it's an anti-ship missile, and it comes from an Anglo-French collaborative project and manufactured by NVDA. It isn't perhaps classically uh, an anti-ship missile in the way that one might think of it. It's launched from a naval helicopter, so for the UK that's the Wildcat, and for France probably some variation of the Eurocopter, I don't really know. In any case, for the Royal Navy it, rep it replaces the Skua missile, S-K-U-A, uh, which was previously attached to the Wildcat. I don't think either Skua uh, or Sea Venom can be equipped with, uh, or the Merlin cannot equip them in any case. Uh, but basically Skewer and Sea Venom, they share a lot because it is almost an evolution, a natural progression of the project. Uh, they have to carry out a lot of the same function because they are both helicopter launched uh, naval missiles. So in continuing Skewer's versatility, and Skewer was really versatile, it's only going to be far better. Sea Venom will be able to basically target a plethora of different targets, from fast craft corvettes, potentially even larger warships, so long as it has longer aiming time. But generally, that does require perhaps a little more precise aim. I think you've got to put it in certain modes. That takes more time, but it has that capability, which is important, because as we've been talking about, you see this difference between specialization Generalization, and generalization is versatility. This isn't so much a configurable missile. It's generalist, it's versatile, and that's a very good thing. Uh, but, generally, it does perhaps require a little bit more time to take on larger targets. So it's going to be more reserved for stuff like fast craft. Uh, literal combat, mainly. Because that's when the helicopters are really used in a non uh, I guess, submarine hunting function, in an anti-surface function. So it's going to really actually be powerful once it gets fully integrated into service. Uh, but to make it even more versatile, not only can it strike fast craft, not only can it strike uh, literal ships, corvettes and stuff, it can also strike static land targets. So it's basically the skewer on steroids, so that makes it hugely versatile, that makes it even more powerful, and that means that actually in literal combat it can be really useful, because getting rid of anti-air defences is hugely important in that scenario. It has a mass of 110 kilograms, uh, of which its, its warhead comprises about 30 kilograms, so it's reasonably lightweight for a naval missile. It uses, for the warhead, which is 30 kilograms, as I said, a semi-armor-piercing fragmentation warhead, which, just for future reference, nearly all fragmentation warheads, and pretty much any warhead that has any sort of fragmentation component, it uses tungsten carbide, because that's hard and that's in accordance with the Geneva Convention, and that's a good thing. So, that's the UK version. The French version is... Uh, simply a stale baguette launched through a shaken bottle of champagne at the rear end. In any case, the munition itself has a length of 2.5 meters and a diameter of 20 centimeters. So a lot of its benefit actually lies in its range. It's got pretty long range. It's standoff for a sort of naval context in that basically it can go above 20 kilometers. MBDA haven't particularly specified yet, nor the Royal Navy, but it can go a reasonably long way, which means that when it's launched from the Wildcat, 
it can be outside anti-air defences, generally most modern anti-air defences, and then travel to the target. And basically, even at these long ranges, it has a lot of precision. So it's compatible with a load of tar targets, it can be launched safely, it can travel a long way at uh, high subsonic speed to basically pack a punch with precision, and that's pretty much all one wants from this sort of versatile helicopter-launched naval missile. The missile is also capable uh, of several attack modes, and this is really where the Sea Venom, I guess, upgrade of the skewer comes in. Its ability to coordinate its data links, that sort of thing. So it's got two real modes that's uh, sort of sea skimming and then pop up or sort of top attack strike. It can move away from its original position before strike and attack from different angles. Uh, and not only can it really do this alone, but it can also synchronize with other, uh, it can synchronize strikes with different modes, uh, and Sea Venom basically does this using, I think it's uh, some sort of infrared guidance. Uh, I think it's un uncooled infrared seeker, basically. Uh, with the option of man in the loop, basically track via missile guidance, and that's all through data link, and so you maximize, I guess, autonomous ability and keep people in the loop, uh, and that's really important actually because Sea Venom's ability to maneuver before strike means it can be controlled, can control, be can be controlled right up until the strike occurs. So more than this, to basically enhance that to enforce this data link it's got high speed two way data link basically which transmits the images seen by the seeker uh, back to the operator the man in the loop as it were enabling them to remain in control and potentially divert the missile throughout its mission as well as gain forward information potentially and again that's the best of both worlds they're also trying to develop uh sea venom for ship use, so it'd be launched from the surface of a ship, generally probably in littoral combat. In any case, I think Sea Venom is pretty promising. It's only just entering service now, but I think it's going to be, you know, equally impactful and have the same sort of longevity of, as Skewer. Uh, all in all, really, it can, it can hit a load of targets simultaneously, incorporating modern tactics, uh, even in sort of congested, chaotic, littoral environments that helicopters are likely to operate in. So it also minimizes collateral damage, it maximizes effect, and that's a really good thing, with its precision. It's survivable, that's another thing I forgot to say. Uh, it's able to turn away from the target before the strike occurs. It uh, can travel in this sea skimming mode, meaning that it basically minimizes, I guess, air defense or closing weapon systems ability to target it. So it's really powerful, uh, and it's going to be a huge asset to the Royal Navy in the near future. It's good, and nothing more should really be said, so I'll leave it there.